Hallelujah. Give Jesus a shout of praise and victory. Amen. Why don't you lift your hands with me? Let's welcome the presence of God. Amen. Put, put your hands down for a moment. You know, in the book of Acts, how many of you have heard of Pentecost? When the Holy Spirit came down in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that the whole, the whole church was with one accord. There was no one who was on their phone, half asleep. No one was walking out. Everybody's hearts and minds were on God and expecting a touch, a move, and the presence of God. Amen. So I want us to be in one accord for a few minutes as we hear from God and welcome His presence. So close your eyes and just lift your hands with me. Just forget about everything else. Forget about where you came from and where you're going after church. And for a few moments, just keep your hearts and your minds on the Holy Spirit. Just begin to speak in tongues or if you don't speak in tongues, pray in whichever language you speak and just say, Holy Spirit, I want to see you. I want to experience you. I need a touch from you. I need your help. I need your guidance. I need your blessing. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome in this place. Let your cloud fill this room like it fills Solomon's temple. Let us know the reality of your presence. Holy Spirit, we long for your fellowship. Oh, sweet Holy Spirit, manifest yourself. Manifest yourself. Walk in the room, Lord. We welcome your presence. All of us need your presence, Lord. We are hungry for you. We are hungry for you, Lord. We are hungry for you. I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel you work through. I want to be more like you. You know, close your eyes, lift your hands and tell him, Jesus, I want to be more like you. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more. I want to be more like Jesus. Jesus, sing it one more time. I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be more like you. Like Jesus, I want to be a vessel you want to do. I oh, come on. Let's sing it again. I stand, I stand in all of you. Oh, lift your hands, tell him I'm in all of you, God. I'm in all of your presence. In all of you. Holy God. Holy God. I stand, I stand in all 
I stand, I stand in all you. Softly sing to him, I stand. I stand, I stand in all you. Come on, church, let me hear you sing, Holy God. Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Interrupt our plans this afternoon, Lord. Let your will be done. You do what you want to do, Lord. You say what you want to say, Lord. We came to hear from you. Holy Spirit, manifest yourself. Even right now, Lord, manifest yourself. Make yourself real in this place. We ask you for an encounter with you. We want to come closer to you, Lord. We're in awe of you, God. We're in awe of your wonderful presence. We're in awe of your power. We're in awe of what you've done. We're in awe of the experience of walking with you and finding you, Lord. Let your presence go with us, Lord. Let your presence go with us, Lord. We desire you, Lord. Let the things of this world grow dim and fade away because we can see your face, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for your cross, Lord. Wash us in your blood, Jesus. Let us, let us have an experience with you today, Lord. Let us come to know you more. Let's come closer to you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, do you love the Lord? I said, do you love the Lord? Yes. Hallelujah. Please take your seats. Amen. What a, what a privilege to be here. Um, I can't believe today is our last day for this wonderful conference. Our God has been good to us. Amen. Um, I just want to say before I preach how much we love and appreciate um, all that you, you are to us and for having all of us over here. Um, we are so grateful to you. And... Um, I'm so grateful to your pastor, who's also my pastor, uh, Pastor David, for his kindness and for the privilege of relating with him and learning so much from him. And um, he, he, knowing him and, and Sister Bev and Shah and the whole family, EJ and the whole COP family, has really been something special for me, my father, my mother, um, my, my wife and I, our whole family, our, our church family. We love you all so much, and um, it's good to have Filipino brothers and sisters all the way here, and um, we love you so much. Um, the only problem is, when uh, Pastor David came in June, I didn't see all of you in Ghana, so I'll be expecting you there next year. Amen. Okay, okay COP. Okay. I'm expecting all of you in Ghana. Amen. Your amen is not, it's not so sure now. Wonderful. Well, uh, this weekend we've been looking at the quiet time. Everyone say quiet time. It is the time you spend alone with the Lord. In Mark chapter 1 verse 35, the Bible says, And Jesus rose up uh, while it was still dark. 
it says in the ESV, and it says he went to, uh, he departed to a desolate place, and there he prayed. Amen. In Luke chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says Jesus would often slip away from where everyone else was, and he would go and be alone with the Lord. Amen. And God is calling you. His voice is speaking to your heart, and he's asking you to spend some time with him alone. Coming to church and hearing the word of God is a blessing, but it cannot replace the time you spend alone with Jesus. You cannot be, you cannot be successful at the Christian life without learning the secret place and without learning to be alone with God, reading his word, praying and worshiping him and spending time with him. And uh, from last night until this morning's service, I've been sharing on what happens when you have your quiet time? What happens? Um, when, when you understand the blessings of spending time alone with God, you'll find out that it's the, probably the thing that changes a Christian the most is when you spend time alone with the Lord. Amen. And um, I want to give you one of the things that happens when you are alone with God. And that, that is when you are alone with God, you draw nigh to God. And God draws nigh to you. You go close to God and God comes close to you. In James chapter 4 and verse 8, the Bible says, draw near. Draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. How many of you want to be near God? Yeah. Sometimes when people are looking for a place to rent or to stay or to buy, you're looking for a house or an apartment, you look for something that's near a filling station, or you look for something that's near a post office, or you look for something that's near a supermarket. And when you are situating your life, you need to look for something that's near where God is and where God's presence is. How do we get close to God? How can we be close to, to God? How do you get close to a great person? I've been to, I've been outside Buckingham Palace in London before a number of times. And I've stood at the gate and I look inside and I see these soldiers wearing red jackets and big black hats. And I wave at them, they don't wave back. Now after them, there's an office. And uh, it's the office that regulates the visitors to the palace. Then after them, there's the Chamberlain, who runs the household of Buckingham Palace. Then after the Chamberlain, there's the chief of staff for the queen. Then after that, there's the queen's grandchildren. Well, when she was still alive. Who are her grandchildren? Oh yeah, those guys, yeah. And then after the grandchildren, there's the queen's children. Then there's the queen's husband before you get to the queen. So I've never, I've never met her before. One time I was in the barbering shop and I heard shouting outside. And everybody in the, in the, I was cut, so the, the barber who was cutting my hair put the machine down and ran outside. So I was alone in the shop. So my hair was half cut. And I went outside to see what everybody was looking at. And there was the queen with her husband and she was shaking people's hands on the street. So with my half haircut, I tried to go and shake the queen's hand. But the soldiers, they stopped me, me and the barber, we were both stopped. I think when they saw us, they were worried. They had some security concerns. What I'm saying, it is not easy to get close to a great person. But the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the master and the ruler of the universe, the one who made the sun and the stars, the one the Bible says he holds the, the world in the palm of his hand. He says, if you make an attempt to draw nigh to me, I will draw nigh to you. That's not what the queen's bodyguard said. The queen's bodyguard said, if you try to come close, we'll push you even further away. But Jesus says to you today, draw nigh to me. Draw nigh to me. 
People ask me, how can I get close to God? I'll tell you how you get close to God. You wake up at 3 a.m., you wake up at 4 a.m., and you go out into a place where no, where no one else is, and you open your Bible, and you lift up your hands, and you worship the Lord, and you start to, to pray to Him. And you say, God, where are you, Lord? Where can I find you? I, I've never seen you before, but I know you're real, and I know you exist. And God sees you, and He hears you, and He says, when you make that effort to draw nigh to me, this is the promise of God. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. If you want to be near God, just take a few steps, then God will finish the journey. We cannot come close to God. We cannot come close to God. We wouldn't, we wouldn't know where to find God. Where does God live? Does he live in COP East Campus? What's the name of the area where East is? Passe. Is God in Passe? Where does God live? Is he in um, Alabang? I'm just mentioning names I know. Is he in Patangas? Is he in Cebu? Where is Cebu campus? I can't see Cebu with us. Oh, it's a black screen. Okay, it's God in Bulacan. Bulacan, wave at us. No? I don't know if they can see us. COP North. Hello? Now, if I want to, if I want to go, what's the name of the pastor in, in North Campus? Al Jeff. If I want to go to where Al Jeff is, I just need to ask Pastor Shah, what's the address for COP North? And she'll give me the address. I'll put it in Google Maps and I'll be there in 45 minutes. But how do we find where God is? God says, don't bother to try and find where my house is or where my location is. You just take one step towards me. Draw nigh to me. And I will finish the rest of the journey. Look at Luke chapter 15 verse 20. We, there's a story of the prodigal son. He went far away from God. He walked away from God's house. He didn't want to be close to God. But the Bible says, when he came to his senses, he arose and he started to walk back towards the Lord. And the Bible says, while he was still a long way off, he was very far away. But because he took one step towards God, he says, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. And the Bible says, his father saw him. I came to tell you, Jesus sees all those who spend time looking for him. Jesus sees all those who crack open their Bibles, trying to find where he is. He sees all those who are struggling. You know, sometimes, Pastor Duke, I pray and I can't feel God. I can pray for four hours, five hours. I can be alone with God for six hours. 10 hours, 12, and I'm looking for God. That's how the prodigal son felt as he went towards God and he knew he was a sinner, a weak person, somebody who couldn't make it to where God was, somebody who didn't add up. But as he took his steps towards God, I love that, 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 that little sentence. It says, his father saw him and felt compassion. When God sees you in your room, you lift up your hands. God sees you in your backyard. You lift up your hands and say, Lord, I'm looking for you. When God sees you opening up your Bible to try to find him and try to hear his voice, the Bible says the father saw him when he was still very far and he ran to him. You know, the prodigal son never made it home. People say the prodigal son went back home. He never made it home. The father saw him afar. And the father finished the journey which he, the son, could not finish. You want to be close to God? You want to go close to God? He says, draw near to me. Draw near to me. You, where does God live? Where does God live? The nearest star after the sun. The sun is the nearest star to earth. After the sun, the nearest star, if we flew on an airline, a, 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 a Philippine Airlines plane, it would take 50, 50 million years. 50, if, we, if we flew at top speed without refueling, no transit, direct flight, it would take 50 million years to reach the next star. And the Bible says, um, God dwells above the stars. So that's, that, God is above that. So if you and I try to buy a plane ticket to go and find where God is, it would take us 50 million years. 
if you are 42 now you'll be 50 million and 42 years old by the time you get to and that's that's when you get to the star but god is above the stars so how can we go to where god is but lord we want to be where you are we want to be in your presence this is what god says to you draw nigh to me draw nigh i'll finish the rest of the journey i'll travel over 50 million years to finish the journey all i need you to do is make it to the next room draw nigh to god and he'll draw nigh to you how can i be close to god go towards god draw close to me he says draw close to me and he'll and i'll draw close to you and going close to god whoop. pastor why would i like to go close to god well look at that because god will clean your hands god will cleanse your hands from your sins from your sins when you go close to god he cleans you up a lot of christians have lost faith in the power of god to free them from the power of sin a lot of christians believe god can't really remove the power of sin from my life a lot of people feel i can't really change a lot of people feel i've tried for many years the problem is you have tried but if you allow god to work it out in you if you allow the power of the holy spirit if you surrender to the power and the presence of the holy spirit your life will be changed when you draw near to god the first thing he does is he cleanses your hands and the next thing he does is he purifies your heart he cleans your heart your heart you know your desires the things you are looking for in this life it's it goes away it goes away when you spend time with God when you don't spend time with God you you want to be impressive to people you know pastors who don't spend time with God they really want to be they want to look good on Instagram they want to be impressive to the world they, they want they want to they want to be famous we want so many things but when you are near God you know when Moses went up into the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights he was in the very presence of God and the Bible says he, he didn't eat or drink he had no desires he had no hunger when he was in the presence of God purify your hearts you change your heart changes the things you are looking for changes you know now the church is so covetous that the desires of christians are the same as the desires of the world one of my church members once told me i want to be the richest man in the world why why do you have that desire where did it come from draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. God is speaking to you today. He's whispering to your heart. Draw nigh to me. Draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. He will clean your hands. How many of you want your hands, your sins to be cleansed? Oh yes. How many of you want your hearts, your hearts to be cleaned? Draw nigh to me. I'll draw nigh to you. When you draw nigh to God, when you draw nigh to God, you hear God's voice. Acts chapter 7, verse 30. Acts chapter 7, verse 30. You'll hear his voice. You'll hear his voice. When 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai in a flame of fire in a bush. This is talking about Moses. Verse 31. And the Bible says, when Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight. And he did what? Oh, COP, come on. He did what? He drew near to look. And there came the voice. When you go close to God, you, you hear his voice. Sometimes when I'm home, my wife is talking to me from three rooms away. And she expects me to hear. She said, Joshua, what? What did you say? I can't hear you. Oh, what? Oh, what? You are too far. 
So I say, Kiki, I'm in another room. Can you come closer? Then she comes closer. I said, I'm going out. I'll see you later. I said, ah. You see, God has been trying to get through to you and he's been trying to speak to you. But every time he speaks, he... God, what did you say? It's too noisy. There are too many people around. It's too busy at work. You are too anxious about many things. But when you draw near to God, you're here. When you have your quiet time, you spend time alone with God, He speaks to your heart. Luke chapter 15, verse 1. The Bible says, and the, the Pharisees, Luke chapter 15, 1 5, verse 1. The Bible says, the Pharisees and the publicans. Luke chapter 15, verse 1. The tax collectors and the sinners were all drawing near to oh. hear him. To hear him. To hear him. Pastor Duke, tax collectors are going to hear the voice of God. We pastors have to sit up. If tax collectors want to hear God's voice, pastors, singers, do you want to hear God's voice speaking to you? People say, I don't know what God's will is for my life. I can't hear his voice. I don't know. If you draw near, you hear his plan for your life. My, the junctions of my life have been filled with the voice of God speaking to me when I'm alone with him. This morning he spoke to me. I was alone with him. He spoke to me. He spoke to me. Yesterday I was at breakfast with some people. But I couldn't hear God's voice. It was too noisy. The, the sound of cutlery. And frying eggs. It's too noisy. God wants to get you alone. So God is like my wife. He's calling you. John. Yes, Lord. But the, the tax collectors and the sinners. Are there any sinners who want to hear God's voice? Are there any weak people who want to hear the voice of God? They drew near to hear. I pray that God will open your ears to hear his voice speaking to your heart. Oh, I thought you'd say amen. COP upstairs, I thought you'd say amen. Draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. Now when we draw nigh to God, we can speak to him. Now in Genesis 18, if, if, you, if we had the time, we would have read from verse 1, but I think we, we, we have to stick to time. But in Genesis 18, the Bible says, some, some men came to meet Abraham. And they were... They came to discuss that God wanted to destroy Sodom. And so they had a meeting. It was these men, God and Abraham, a meeting. You know, when you're a friend of God, God doesn't do anything in your area without discussing it with you. <laughs> he doesn't move in your city without telling you what's going to happen first. You know, when Maria Woodworth Etta was in the ministry, she came and spoke against speaking in tongues. And that night, God appeared to her and told her, you know, that I'm doing the tongue stage. I'm the one. So the next morning, she came back on stage. It was a three-day thing. She came back and said, God told me yesterday that what I said yesterday was wrong. And that it's something he's doing in America. Sorry, Maria, I should have told you. I mean, I, I'm, I'm working in your country. How many of you want to know what God is doing in your... Oh, my goodness. His friends. He tells his friends. So God had the meeting, but Moses, uh, Abraham wanted to tell God that he should spare Sodom and Gomorrah because Abraham's cousin was in Sodom and Gomorrah. So in Genesis chapter 18, verse 22, Genesis chapter 18, verse 22, the Bible says, uh, could, you, could you give me, okay, yes, this fine. The men, the men, the three men, they turned and went towards Sodom to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. These were angels. But Moses still stood. You see, Moses just waited. You see, they were, they were a group, but Moses wanted to say something to God. And there were too many people around. So Moses waited for the meeting to end and the three men walked away. Then in the next verse, the scripture says, And Abraham drew near and said, When you draw near to God, you can talk to him. Oh yes, you have something to ask God about? You have something to say to him? When you wake up in the morning and you're alone, you don't need your pastor to talk to God for you. I don't need your pastor to talk to God for you. That was in the Old Testament. 
when jesus died the veil was torn and the holy spirit came out and he's ready to be near to anyone you don't need to be a high priest you don't need to be a levite you don't need to be from anywhere you just need to desire and be hungry to be with him and to know him he says draw nigh to me and i'll draw nigh to you abraham drew near and said he began a negotiation i, I love that he waited for everyone to leave i've done that many times i see some stuff that i want to tell god but there are too many people around excuse me excuse me i need to talk to jesus i need to talk about what's happening you know people like making calls when they have a crisis i'll call this person i'll call that person i'll talk to that person no i trust my knees i trust my knees more than i trust my phone i trust the power of being on my knees and talking to god about it oh god it's messy out here oh god i'm struggling oh god i'm hurt oh god i'm angry oh god i'm upset oh god i'm confused oh god i'm worried oh god i'm anxious oh god i'm scared oh god i'm afraid oh god i'm broke oh god i'm empty oh god i'm dry oh god i'm far oh god i feel out of place oh god i feel left out oh god i don't know what's going on but i can't say any of these things when we are here in church but tomorrow morning i'll be alone with the lord and i have some things i want to discuss with him and some things i want to tell him and when i want to say something to god like abraham i draw near i draw near to god in my quiet time and i speak to him draw nigh to god and he'll draw nigh to you who wants to be close to god who wants to be close to god you know when you draw nigh to god there's, there's pollution in the world. But when you draw nigh to God, He cleans and removes the pollution that's in the world. Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 1. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 1. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 1. Woe to her who is rebellious and defiled. All right? She's defiled, dirtied. You know what that is you? The world. The world just that is you. You remember what James said? Pure religion and undefiled is to remain unspotted from the world. James chapter 1 verse 27. To not let the world... You see, when we go to work, we go to school, we go to... We become like the world. Yeah. Just being in that atmosphere, the music they listen to, the things they talk about, the way their minds work, the arguments we have with them, the issues we have at work, it, 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 it defiles and dirties us. Religion that is pure and undefiled is to keep oneself unstained from the world. The world has a stain it puts on you. Worldliness. Worldliness. It's called worldliness. Do you know how to know when someone's worldly? The Bible says the world loves their own. When the world likes how you are, you know when, when an unbeliever says, I like your type of Christianity yeah you're not like those other christians i like how you are you are so accepting you're so nice we like you we don't like those other christians and those it's you that we love and you that we like it means you're getting stained but we can't help it jesus said we are in the world the, the bible says we are in the world we're not of it but we are in the world so how do we get cleaned every morning you know no matter how nice you look now if you don't bath for two days you're gonna smell bad and in the realm of the spirit no matter how nice you look if you don't get cleaned up every single morning you're going to get dirty and you're going to get smelly and how do you clean up every day Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 1 it says this this rebellious and polluted city Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 1 why is she dirty number two it says verse 2 she listens to no voice she accepts no correction she does not trust in the lord and she does not draw near to her god unless i'm reading another bible but it's right there she drew not near people who don't spend time with god get dirty stained polluted she didn't draw near to her god draw nigh to me who wants to be close to god wants to be close to God sometimes as a pastor I feel really sad because I sense that people in my church 
want to be closer to me than they are to God. They'll spend all their energy to have my approval, a relationship with me, which is great. Every pastor wants to have a good relationship with their people, but I find it so sad because I wouldn't trade my relationship with God with my relationship with any of my church members. There's no one in my life I would trade my relationship with God with. No. I love him. He has my heart. He has everything. And I can't lie, I get spotted. I get, you know, pastors, we, sometimes we get upset. It's tough leading people. And we get, we get affected. But every morning, she draws near to her God. She gets cleaned up. She gets washed. You don't, if you don't spend time with God, you're in danger. I'm telling you, even, even as a pastor, you're in danger. You can get bitter. You can get hurt. And when people are bitter and hurt, they don't say they're bitter and hurt. They say things like, I've learned my lesson. People will never change. I've forgiven, but I've not forgotten. I'm just adjusting. And you can tell in little comments that there's a, there's a place that hasn't been healed. But you see, the wounds of your heart cannot be healed by any medicine or any balm. The only balm that can heal is the balm of Gilead. The only medicine to heal your heart is drawing near to God. When you come close to God, when you come close to where God is, you will be made whole. I said you will be made whole. You will be made whole. The woman with the issue of blood didn't talk to anybody about it. She just said, I just need to come close to where Jesus is. She said, even if I don't get a hug or a kiss, even if he never lays his hand on me, as long as I can make some contact with the very extremity of his person, even if I don't get to him, I just get to what covers him. My nearness to God is my good. It's my healing. Draw nigh to me. You're in COP. You've been offended in this church for the last five years because of something somebody told you five years ago. Somebody stepped on your toe on your way out and she didn't say sorry. And so every time you come to church, you look at her and she's in the choir as well. So when we are singing, you're worthy of it all, you're like, i worthy of it all. Because you are hurt and you're offended. And there's nothing I can ever do or nothing I can ever preach to heal you. But when you spend time alone with Jesus, He'll touch your heart. He'll satisfy. There's a song we used to sing. Um, oh, let the Son of God enfold you with His Spirit and His love. Let Him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. He'll heal you. He'll satisfy you. He'll change you. Receive healing in your soul. Receive healing in your heart. Receive the removal of all pollutants and all, all stains from the world. And may God cleanse your hearts as you draw near to him. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. When you are close to God, his word is true. Psalm 119, verse 151. Are you listening to me, COP? I'm almost done. Psalm 119, verse 151. You are near, O Lord. And your commandments are true. You are near, O God. And your commandments are true. When God is near, you have a fear for his word. When people are not near God, they just do what they want. They just say anything. You know, sometimes I ask people, you know, how you're behaving and how you're speaking. Can you show me anyone in the Bible, a good person in the Bible, who did what you are doing? Like, let's even assume that what you are worried about, or what you are trying to address is true. Like, can you show me a version of what you are doing in God's Word? What verse is that? How you're behaving? But people feel God's Word is not true. There are Christians who come to church, pay tithes, give offerings. And have a terrible relationship with their parents. But the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. That it may be well with you. 
which means it doesn't affect your parents but that will be well with you and that you will live long on the earth but you see because you're not close to God you feel it's not true but that's why everything in your life isn't going well it's not well with you it's not well not well means it's not going well that's why you're struggling at your job and you're struggling in your relationship and you're struggling with everything in your life because the Bible says as long as you have a terrible relationship with your parents and you dishonor your parents and you disobey your parents it will not be well with you and you will not live long on the earth look at Michael Jackson Michael Jackson was the youngest of the siblings youngest of all of them I think there were five of them and he's the youngest of all of them youngest richest he was the wealthiest of all of them he was also the most talented of all of them he was also the most famous most successful most everything most good looking but he was the only child who had so much conflict with his father on and on and on he would always complain about his father and the other siblings said our father made us who we are without our father we wouldn't be who we are he was the only one who's, who had so much conflict with his father and he's the only one who it was not well with and he was the one who didn't live long on the earth the bible is true he was the only one he's the richest youngest best looking most talented most successful most famous but so many issues with his life his family depression cannot sleep What's the cause of it? But when you're not close to God, you say, ah, oh, the Bible is not true. Oh, that doesn't really apply to me. Oh, that's not really the case. But when you're close to God, you know his word is true. Thou art near, O God, and your commandments are truth. I see people all the time who don't seem to have a regard for God's word. What God's word says. God tells husbands to love their wives. That's a commandment, by the way. It's not an option. God tells wives to submit to their husbands. It's an instruction. You, can, you can't change the Bible. But when you are far from God, you say, God doesn't know my husband. If he knew my husband, he would change that verse. God doesn't know my wife. You can't love my wife. I'm married to a witch, God. I cannot love her. It's because you are far from the Lord. But when you are close to God, thou art near, O Lord. And all your commandments are truth. When you draw near to God, you experience the goodness of God. Exodus chapter 33. And I close with this one. Exodus 33. 18. Exodus 33, 18. Exodus 33, 18. Moses said, Please show me your glory. How many of you want to see the glory of God in your life? Glory is the beauty of God. And then the Lord responded and said, I will make my goodness pass before you. Goodness. I will proclaim my name, the Lord. I will be gracious to whom I'll be gracious and I'll show mercy on whom I'll show mercy. And then he says, verse 24, Verse 24, next verse. Or 20, sorry. But you, you cannot see my face, for no man will see me and live. 21. And the Lord said, There is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And what God was telling Moses, so Moses said, God, I want to see your glory. And God said, I'll, I'll make my goodness pass in front of you. But for you to see my goodness, you have to stand right next to me to see the goodness of God. You won't know God's goodness by being far from Him. You'll only know His goodness when you are close to Him. Do you like, do you like apple pie? Who likes apple pie? 
apple pie nobody do you, do you eat apple pie here okay anyone likes apple pie no one this section doesn't want any apple pie let me check somewhere else anybody like apple pie okay let's try something else give me a pie people like boko who likes boko okay okay what's inside of boko coconut okay you see when you eat a boko right and then you get to the part where there's not enough coconut that's the dry part and that's the part nobody likes right when you have a pie and you're trying to get to the part where the goodness is you see serving god isn't always easy jesus said you have to take up your cross to follow me jesus said anyone who follows me will lose something the bible says you have to deny yourself the bible says you'll be persecuted in this life that's the dry part of serving god but the good part the part where the coconut is in the buko where the buko becomes sweet and nice that's the goodness of god but you'll never taste of that goodness unless you are very close to god the goodness and the sweetness comes from standing near to where god is that's the nice part not preaching the goodness the good part of being God for me I can say for sure is not preaching I love to preach by the way I preach so multiple times a week I love it. it's my job but that's not the best part I love um, I love uh, counseling I sit down with people I listen to their problems I open God's word I give them guidance I pray with them I love it I like concerts I like musical concerts. I'm sure I would love Wow God. Yeah, I love music. But the good part is when I have my quiet time with God in the morning. When I stand near, there's a place near God. When I stand there, I see His goodness. I see His grace. This is not for few people experience this. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 18, God spoke to the people of Israel. And the Bible says the, the, the voice of God was thundering and lightning and flashes of lightning and the sound of a trumpet. And there was smoke on the mountain. And the people were afraid and trembled. So they stood far. But in verse 19, it says, they said to Moses, you go speak to God. This is how many church members are. Can Pastor, can Pastor Alicia talk to God? And then on Sunday, just come and tell us what God said. I don't want to talk to God myself. It's too scary. Lightning, thunder, smoke, too much. It's too much for me. Can she find something that God said? Can Pastor David just find something that God told us? And just, just come tell us. We don't need to see God ourselves. It's too much. On Sunday, we come for the 10 o'clock. You tell us what God said. And then we see you next week. That's how most Christians are. You speak to God and then come and tell us. We'll listen and don't let God speak to us. But that's not, that was not Moses' reaction to the presence of God. The next verse says, and Moses alone, next verse, Moses alone drew near to the thick darkness where God was. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Moses drew near. Who wants to be close to God? I, I, it's a genuine question I'm asking. Who is hungry for God? Who loves the, the you know, there's a song we, we used to sing, just the sense of you coming near. I don't know if you know that song. Yeah. Just the sense of you coming near. When all is said and done. There's another song we, we sing that says, help me know you are near. You know that song? You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. Help me know you are near. Help me know you are close. How many of you like to be in your house and, and God walks in to sit with you and to spend time with you? Yeah, I'll tell you how to do it. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Yeah, you'll, he'll, you'll hear his voice, he'll speak to you, he'll change you, he'll clean you, you experience his goodness, you taste of his kindness, you experience the, the wonderful part of knowing God is being close to him. So I pray for you that you experience what it's like to be near him. No, Psalm, in Psalm 148, verse 14. And I know it's going to take a while, but you have to give me that the amplifier. I close with that verse. Why don't you stand to your feet, actually, while we wrap up? Psalm 100, 
and 48 verse 14. Amplified. Amplified. A-M-P. God is everything. God wants to know you. God wants to be close to you. I said God wants to know you. I said God wants to be close to you. God knows your name. Now look at this. He has lifted up his horn for his people. God has lifted a horn for COP. And he's given, you know, I, I need to know, I, 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 what's your name, my dear? Joy. God has lifted up a horn for joy. He's going to give joy strength. He's going to give joy prosperity. He's going to give joy dignity. Dignity. God, God will provide your life with dignity. He'll make you dignified. God is giving joy preeminence. And why is he doing this? He's doing this for joy because she's part of the people that are near to him. Look at it. A people near to him who wants strength, who wants prosperity, who wants dignity, who wants preeminence. God is giving it to you because you draw nigh to him. This is the promise of God. Draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hearts. God... God is uh, COP South God wants to be close to you COP South God wants to be close to you He told me to tell you COP East Campus The Lord wants to be your friend He knows your name He knows where you live He knows the hairs on your head He knows your mom is sick he knows your father is not at home. He knows you are struggling. He knows what you are going through. He knows everything that concerns you. And he says, you draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you dignity and preeminence and prosperity and strength. God is like a jealous girlfriend. He doesn't want you to love anything else. He wants you to love him. Uh, the Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 5, that don't you know that the spirit lusts to envy? The Holy Spirit, is, He wants to be near you. Do you know God is thinking about you? Have you ever been in love before? Like, you know, when you are first in love. Oh my goodness. Have you, have you, have you fallen in love with a girl in church before? Oh, COP, it's happened to me before. Look, well, it still happens to me. Sha, don't get me in trouble. Don't, don't, don't. I have to sleep well tonight, you know. <laughs> when, I, when I fell in love with my wife, you know, I would go to church sometimes. And we'll be singing a song. I will go forward to give an offering and I'll be looking at her. Wondering if she's seen me. And sometimes when she gives the offering, she's going back. She'll look at me and our eyes will meet. And I'll just look away like I wasn't looking. Sometimes after church... I, I, I don't know how to start talking to her, so I, I go to her and I tell her, oh, I'm, I'm looking for the bathroom. But one time I told her I'm thirsty, I need water. I wasn't really thirsty, I just wanted a reason to talk to her. Because my mind and my heart was set on her. Oh, yes. Even now, sometimes I'm at home and I just go to where she is, but I don't have anything to say. I just... So I go and stand there and I find something to say. Because I, I want that's how God feels about you. You know, in Psalm 139, verse 17. You remember this verse? Psalm 139, verse 17. It says that how precious to me are your thoughts, O God. Like God's thoughts about you, Andrew. He looks at you the way I was looking at my wife, like, will Andrew talk to me today? I, when I get to spend time with, you know, I also don't understand it. This is why the scripture says, who is man that you are mindful of him? Why do you care? But God is looking at you. What's your name, my friend? Michael, God is... Marlon. God is looking at you and wondering, will I see him today? Will I get to spend some time with him? Now he says, how precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. And how vast is the sum or the number of thoughts that God has for you? Right? And he counts them in the next verse. 
he says the number of thoughts that God has for you right next verse verse 18 the number of times God thinks about your you in a day he says if I would count them they are more than the sand do you understand all the sand on all the beaches from the Philippines to Indonesia, to Singapore, to Vietnam, to Thailand, to Australia, to Auckland, to Fiji, to Papua New Guinea, to Solomon Islands, to Ghana, to Cote d'Ivoire, to Togo, to Hawaii, to Miami. All the thoughts, you gather all the sand and that's how God is thinking about just you. And he's praying and he's hoping that you draw nigh to him. He says, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. I want to be close to you. I want to be your friend and I don't understand it I don't understand it I agree you're weird you're strange yeah and how many of you feel weird sometimes I feel weird sometimes but God wants to be with a weird person like me God wants to be with a bad boy like you you are a bad boy you are a bad boy you are a bad girl but God wants to be close to you uh, yeah he wants to he wants to spend his time with you what a promise what a promise james chapter 4 verse 8 what a promise draw nigh to me and i'll draw nigh to you it doesn't matter who you are you draw nigh to me i'll draw nigh to you when we get to heaven there'll be some ordinary church members who will be closer to god than pastors because they drew nigh to god and they spent time building their relationship with god and one of those people is you i, I think you missed what i said i said one of those people is you and everybody said Amen. God bless you lift your hands now tell the Lord I want to be close to you Jesus I'm drawing nigh to you Lord oh, okay. that's beautiful yeah can you sing it you're all I want you're all I want you're all I've ever needed know you are near help me know you are near oh I love your presence Lord oh, oh, oh. you're all I want come on every campus singing you're all I want song so much oh la dovra i love singing to you jesus you're all i want lord you're all i want you're all i've ever needed you're all It's a simple song you can lift your hands and sing it too lift your hands up everybody say you're all I want you don't need people to lead you church just sing say you're all I've ever needed
Come on, church, sing, you're all I want. You're all I want. Help me find my way. Help me know you. One very last time. Close your eyes and sing it to the depths of God and tell him you're all I want. Upstairs, everybody, lift up your hands, close your eyes and sing to Jesus. Say you're all I've ever needed. Love him back. We love him because he first loved us. He thought of us. He died for us. And he still wants to be close to us. He wants to be our best friend. He wants to come into our rooms. He wants to live in our hearts. Tell him, help me. Help me to know when you're near. Help me to sense your presence. Help me to hear your voice. And I stand. I stand. In all you. Just worship him. Say, I stand in all of you. What a wonderful presence. What a wonderful presence. Holy God. about to close but one last time I stand and all he loves hearing you sing you know he loves hearing you sing he loves the sound of your voice how wonderful are your thoughts towards me Lord the sum of them is more than the sand your heart is set on me Lord who is man that you're mindful of him that you visit him every morning Just tell him how much you love him. Let's close your eyes and talk to him in your own words. It's, it's, it's not a group thing, it's just you and God. It has nothing to do with anyone standing next to you, it's just between you and God. Close your eyes and just tell him in your own words. Tell him how much he means to you. Tell him how much you love him, how grateful you are to him. Tell him how wonderful he is. Tell him, you are, I'm still in awe of you, God. I'm still impressed by you, Lord. I'm still impressed by you, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful presence. Touch your people, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are real. I know you are real. I believe in you. I know you are real. Walk through the house and touch your people, Lord. I know you are real. I know you are real, Lord. Touch your people. We are drawing nigh to you, Lord. We want to come closer. We want to come closer to you, Jesus. We want to come close to you, Jesus. You are beautiful beyond description, Lord. You are wonderful to behold, Lord. And we stand in awe of you. We are awed by you, Jesus. We are awed by you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. What a wonderful presence. He can hear you, you know. He can hear you and he can see you. Holy God. Holy God. Holy God. We stand in awe, Holy God. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. You satisfy our souls. You satisfy our souls. We need nothing when we have you, Lord. Earthly things can't satisfy. For from you are all things. 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 And we are complete in Him. And we are complete in Him. And there is nothing lacking when He's in the room. And we don't need anything else when we have Him. When you speak to me, you set my spirit free. You are everything, Lord. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You are everything, Jesus. We are grateful to you, Lord. Ah.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All over this place, please bow your heads with me and close your eyes. Some of you have to take the first decision to draw nigh to God today. Getting The first step to getting close to God is to surrender your life to Him. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus came to the earth for people like me and people like you who have made so many mistakes in our lives that we deserve to be punished. We've made such a mess that there's no hope for our future and that's why Jesus came. The Bible says he was made manifest so that he could destroy the works of Satan and everything that Satan has done in your life every mess Satan has created in your life is fixed when Jesus comes into your heart but there are people here tonight who don't know Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior there are people here tonight who can't say if I die tonight I know I'm going to heaven there are people here who are who are not so sure I grew up in church I was in church from the day I was born but there was a day I came to church when I was 19 years old. And I had gone far away from God and I gave my heart to Him. And it was a service just like this. And the pastor made an invitation just like I'm about to. I came with some of my friends. None of them came forward, but I did. And I gave my life to Jesus. And maybe you are here just like me. And you want to say, Pastor, Pray with me, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to keep living my life for myself. I want to give my heart to Jesus. Now, if you're here like that, there are two things I want you to do. The first thing I want you to do is lift up your right hand, right where you're standing. Lift up your right hand. Now, you need to lift it high above your head. There's nothing to be shy about. Everyone here who's a Christian has done exactly what you're doing right now before. I have done it before. I was in the congregation just like you and I lifted up my right hand. I want you to lift up your right hand high, high, high above your head. I need Jesus. Now if you've lifted up your right hand, there's a second thing I need you to do. I need you to leave your seat where you're standing and walk to me right here at the front. I want to pray with you. Come and stand right next to me at the front here. If you lifted up your hand, the second thing I want you to do is to come all the way. There are, there are so many people coming. I saw a number of hands lifted. Just start walking towards me. God bless you, sir. Jesus wants to change your life. Come on, church. Let's sing You're Worthy of It All while they come down. For from you are all things. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. Now in Pampanga, in Bulacan, in Cebu, in COP North Campus, South Campus, East Campus, I can see people in Santa Rosa, in Kawit, in NAIC, in Kanta. There are pastors there. There's an altar there. If you lifted up your hand, I want you to walk to the front. You are a part of what's going on here. God is speaking to you and he wants to save you and change your life. I want you to leave your seat and walk all the way to the front. Our pastors are ready to pray with you in every campus as well. You're worthy. Come to Jesus. Come all the way. Upstairs, at the back, everywhere. Come to Jesus in every campus. North campus, South campus, East campus.
the campuses. Lawak, Sibu, Bulacan, Pampanga. God wants to save you. Doesn't matter who you're standing next to. Don't need to be shy. Just walk to the front. Jesus wants to save you and he wants to change you. I'm waiting for the campuses. You are part of what's going on here. Jesus is speaking to you. He's changing your life. He wants to save you. Come all the way to the front. I'm giving you a few more seconds because there's some more of you who need to give your hearts to Jesus. He loves you. Can you hear us clapping? We are clapping for you because we know what Jesus is doing in your heart. Even right now. God bless you. God bless you. Everybody all over this place, just bow your heads. Close your eyes. Those of you in front, close your eyes, bow your heads. Repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I come to you today. I come to you today. Just as I am. Just as I am. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Write my name in the book of life. Write my name in the book of life. So that one day, so that one day, I come to heaven to be with you. Come to heaven to be with you. I'll say to the devil, say, Satan. Satan. I will no longer follow you. I will no longer. I will no longer serve you. I will no longer serve you. From today. From today. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I have a new life. I have a new life. I say, Jesus. Jesus. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you died. I believe you rose again on the third day. I believe you rose again. Now say, Jesus. Jesus. I know you can see me. I know you can see me. I know you can hear me. I know you can hear me. I know you know my name. I know you know my name. I know you know where I live. I know you know where I live. And today, I give my heart to you. I give my heart. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. I will follow you for the rest of my life. I will follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. For those of you who are here in the front in all of our campuses and all of our branches, we just want to take a few minutes. <laughs> Woo! Oh, we just want to take a few minutes oh, to pray with you and answer questions that you might have. We want to help you. Woo! Master Duke. You're worthy of it all. Come on, lift your hands. The Holy Spirit, so beautiful in this place. You're worthy of it all. Now, close your eyes and tell Jesus, for from you are all things. And to you. And to you.